so we are going to uh, uh, continue we are uh, left last time so we are uh, talking about uh, mm. hilbert space uh, so basically hilbert space are infinite dimensional uh, vector spaces but the thing is sometimes we can uh, make them a finite uh, dimension in the sense that if the assumption of completeness uh, condition is uh, attached to it uh, so we can define uh, hilbert spaces in the way we define uh, hilbert spaces in the finite uh, dimensional spaces so this, the uh, condition of completeness uh, it becomes uh, not only completeness because the idea of completeness is somehow uh, is has conjunction with how we have linear independence and linear independence uh, so sometimes a thing can be complete but it may not necessarily be uh, uh, linearly independent so you can always construct a uh, subset of linearly independent combinations uh, from a linearly dependent combinations uh, so that's the part of it so the question is uh, the last uh, statement we found that uh, a complete uh, a uh, set of orthogonal orthogonal uh, orthogonal vectors is set for a basis of hilbert space so in our uh, case so how to define hilbert space so hilbert space uh, is defined as a non complex vector space so normally we define uh, the book has defined or we also say it is a inner product space and the elements are uh, the products they have a property of the asymmetric conjugate so here in my mathematics books so here we define a, a hilbert spaces of norm uh, complex uh, vector spaces uh, norm complex spaces that's so here so that's either of finite dimension uh, in which there exist in finite uh, set of orthogonal vectors orthogonal vectors phi i that are that are complete so it can have either so the, in the uh, uh, in the not in the mathematical sense they may be infinite dimension but we can sometimes make them they can either be finite dimension but provided there exists in finite set of orthogonal vectors of phi i that are complete so if they are complete uh, they can be uh, and those are composed of uh, orthogonal uh, vectors we can see uh, they can have finite dimension but uh, space can be constructed uh, that way So actually, uh, the completeness condition is also related. Uh, so the book has not defined that. If we just do the finite, so we say basically we define it in terms of uh, convergent sequences. For example, what's the condition that two sequences for n and if n goes to n and m, uh, n goes to m goes to infinity, so it should uh, converge to. It should, uh, but sometimes uh, once how we define real indices, sometimes we keep it fixed. Uh, so so that we should see whether it's bounded from above or bounded from below. So we can uh, so if it's an infinite dimensional space, it's not entirely infinite. We can see whether its convergence can exist within certain limits, and whether those limits are above or below uh, that uh, space uh, so if it is bounded in that sense got my point so so you have to uh, think in that sense so it's a uh, how we defined uh, mathematically uh, in that sense but here uh, 
here uh, for uh, for example yeah, for a present case they are uh, incomplete uh, complete in the sense in the sense so that we are going to just uh, follow the definition of the book for any vector psi psi uh, psi so but psi uh, psi uh, with a set of numbers or scalars alpha psi that the sum psi that the sum i is equal to 1 to infinity alpha i phi i converges to converges to psi so this means for so this means so if we have this uh, two uh, sequences they will go for zero as n tends to infinity uh, the inner product of those uh, sequences which are defined in that space such that there is always a possibility that uh, uh, there is always a possibility that that as a sequence uh, it can be subset of uh, the original uh, space such so that it can uh, be constructed from infinite dimensional uh, subspaces so in principle it's how larger uh, space you can construct a smaller subspace that subspace may be finite dimensional uh, that may be uh, Uh, that may be what I should say, linearly dependent or linearly dependent. So you can always construct a uh, uh, vector space whose subspaces, uh, and from which you can construct subspaces which may be linearly dependent or linearly. So you can always uh, extract uh, the thing, the conditions uh, in that sense. So if you define a uh, one space in terms of psi and other space space in terms of phi and phi has these components so originally how did we define uh, this if you remember we define psi as uh, psi as alpha 1 psi 1 alpha 2 psi 2 so on and so on and forth so this is how we define the original vector spaces but why we are getting phi out here Is, but there is a possibility in these uh, sequences or subspaces there may be uh, some constructions uh, there may be uh, linearly dependent sequences so so the original sequence may be uh, it may be have both linearly independent sequences and linearly dependent sequences but there should be a way by which we can subtract this uh, linear if there is a linear independence or linear dependence Uh, those uh, terms should always uh, truncate, and we should be so. There's a way. There's a particular way that's known as Gram-Schmidt yeah. orthogonalization uh, process. How we can always add uh, the terms to the sequences uh, uh, to make it finite, or to make it complete, or to whatever uh, that thing is. And the condition of orthogonality sometimes. Uh, so. So the later condition allows us uh, to uh, apply some of the mathematical methods. It allows us to apply some of the mathematical methods. If Hilbert, uh, Hil so this is what he is saying. If Hilbert spaces were finite dimensional, if Hilbert Hilbert spaces are finite dimensional, so it is a sort of cheat, cheat in the sense that. Uh, We don't say we say that if Hilbert spaces are fine, so we don't because this is not uh, in principle. We say Hilbert spaces are the infinite dimension, but we can uh, just uh, change our definitions that if we have completeness conditions and the, so there are convergent sequences uh, which which will converge in a given such space, and there can be subspaces which can can be constructed from that space. We can and those might have completeness condition. We can say that that Hilbert spaces can be finite. Yeah. Uh, so this is. It. So now uh, the question is, 
the components of the state uh, components of the uh, state vector components of the components of the components of the components of uh, state vector psi in the basis provided that the complete orthogonal set of vectors are just so the expansion can be defined as psi is on this i goes to n alpha i phi so so for example there are two ways of defining so for example if uh, so there are two ways of defining if we define the components uh, that uh, the orthogonal components will uh, uh, is equal to the original subspace so the larger the original space is not it will be always larger than the subspace which we have defined but if the original space as well as the subspace is linearly independent so there will be there will be no elements from which you can, can it will be uh, lead to sort of uh, some contradiction uh, in that sense so this is what he is saying uh, contradicting that assumptions that psi i is uh, 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 psi i r independent so even though you have constructed also Hilbert space psi in terms of different alpha i's and phi i's alpha i is the scalar phi i are the or these orthogonal uh, maybe these states from which we are constructed so but what is think that it's always larger so if it is also made up of orthogonal states and so then this will be equal to this it will lead to sort of contradiction now the question is that uh, in taking the scalar product uh, we can how do we write the components components of these uh, 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 these components these bases how do we write the way we write components for real class a dot b and modulus of a modulus of b cos of theta how do we write cos theta is a b divided by modulus a modulus b. so in the same way the, uh, here uh, these are the these bases how can there can be components for example if alpha i phi a with phi j we can uh, taking uh, scalar product of of some of uh, some uh, of uh, some uh, this with phi g we can write uh, components components can be written as for example the uh, alpha g component can be written as phi g psi i phi g phi g you know? the g component so it's between j and j it's the modulus it's j component of j with i if it's a alpha uh, i then it will be this you can uh, reverse it so if it's i here then it will be i i here so it's like that so in the same way uh, psi can be expressed uh, in terms of can be expressed in terms of a uh, complete set of orthogonal vectors phi i by so psi can be expressed as phi j psi so it will be phi i phi j into phi j so if it's a component between uh, phi and g uh, phi and phi g uh, it's a component it's phi g uh, it's sorry it's also phi g it's phi g between psi phi and psi it's phi g phi g phi g what uh, so so because we have defined psi in terms of alpha i phi right? so we can write it uh, in terms of uh, one of the alpha we write this so write this uh, in terms of 
and that's this hai na you just we have to substitute this here how can write a particular component in terms of uh, this thing just like we write for in earlier classes now we write uh, work done f is equal to a b cos a in terms of b cos hai you na know? you can write a component of one in terms of another so so this is uh, between uh, one vectors now our goal is not psi we have to write the complex kind psi with psi star or psi with psi you know this is the way so if you want to write the same for example if we write uh, psi with if we write uh, psi with uh, psi prime uh, it will be so uh, we'll have one because it will be pi j psi uh, star so it will be pi i psi prime so we'll have a, in the denominator it will be 5j and 5i the 5j 5j and 5i 5i in the product of 5 is and denominator it will be modulus right so in the numerator is 5j 5psi 5psi complex conjugate of the two and basically we have to find the components of these two phi 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 what we call so this so or since so if we say that uh, since they are orthogonal then psi psi prime uh so if they are uh, orthogonal so j j will be you can uh, write it it can, it can simplify as phi i psi prime star so it's just uh, flip it here so you can write it psi prime uh, i if it's orthogonal uh, j i j j so if we cancel it will be uh, phi i phi i it's uh, auto so it's for example here it's i and g here it's only i so if it's only i phi and j uh, it will cancel with phi and g so for orthogonality condition this is the way it will exist so because here we have to find uh, indices from i runs for i and g here i runs for i because j is a orthogonal and this uh, will cancel with this so the question is uh, so this is the thing so here an important point is here which i did uh, right uh -huh. so so here we are limiting our cells to uh, complete complete we are limiting our cells to complete uh, set of basis vectors phi i uh, that is denumerable so do you know what's denumerable do you know what's denumerable Uh, if you don't remember it has something to do there is a sort of one one uh, correspondence uh, so it's something denumerable also which, which can be countable uh, and uh, maybe uh, countable in the sense that there is an infinite uh, set of integers which are in one to one correspondence which are in one to one correspondence or in your earlier classes on one one map so you can imagine uh, so you are uh, trying to uh, sort of uh, have a vector space uh, we are so so we are you can have one to one correspondence but sometimes you can also have a continuous uh, sequence so here we are only uh, concentrating on the orthogonal basis but the sequence can be uh, the uh, continuous uh, 
uh, on which you are constructing these basis states. So we'll, uh, that is the part of the next uh, subsequent thing. So here, if it's like this, uh, uh, so now how can I enter the, the here comes how we can represent the notion of probabilities uh, in quantum mechanics. Balls, balls by size scale. Because if you have uh, taken a course in quantum, uh, other courses, uh, lesser uh, rigorous course in quantum mechanics, you always have that. It doesn't take any values, quantum states. You will only take some uh, discrete values or eigenvalues. Right? So this you can see may not be infinite in that sense. So so, so how we can uh, clothe our this uh, representation of Hilbert spaces and these states in terms of uh, these things here and these probability interpretations. So the first interpretive part, interpretive uh, postulate of uh, quantum mechanics uh, uh, is that first postulate is that complete orthogonal set of states phi i are in one to one correspondence with all possible results with all possible of some measurement some sort of measurement so complete orthogonal, orthogonal set of states by our one to one correspondence with all possible results of the of some sort of measurements so we are uh, just uh, trying to invoke uh, these uh, orthogonal states which are uh, constructed from those Hilbert, how we define Hilbert spaces uh, so these complete orthogonal states are in one to one corresponds with what all possible results for some sorts of measurements so we are invoking some observables when we measure some states a wave function or observation you know? and this is the first way how we are formalizing the observable part before observation we have to also measurement how we can quantify things and quantify things in terms of these how we define states in terms of these uh, spaces in the vector spaces or Hilbert spaces so 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 if we say that probability of psi uh, so before measurement so if a system if a system before measurement uh, is in state psi so if a system before me measurement is in state psi then the prob prob probability that measurement will re correspond that the probability that it should relate to the measurement phi is given by so if it states psi and we have uh, tried to measure it in the process of measurement the probability or the measurement will give phi this is this is the new it psi goes to phi psi i goes to phi i this means phi i psi i square this is psi this is a uh, psi psi and phi phi so uh, this is it. so in the same way if it's uh, the question is uh, you might have read that it's the square of the amplitude uh, probability so how uh, so that's why we are uh, talked in terms of uh, square of amplitude so there may be something how we have uh, so you just think of it uh, how it has so this is the way we represent uh, the things at least the, uh, the representation part of it we can uh, write it in terms of if uh, psi goes to uh, phi uh, the proof so in the same way uh, 
so this is a how in one major probabilities uh, the fundamental how major probabilities of events uh, so here we are measuring probabilities for a given state psi going to state phi after measurement this is the representation here so and in the same way if it is uh, psi going to psi uh, which is a complete uh, orthogonal orthogonal uh, set for then psi going to psi can be written as for orthogonal set it's phi i psi i it's phi going to phi i the way we, uh, in the last thing also we had is for the orthogonal cases uh, we did this thing, uh, did not uh, contribute uh, Psi, psi, sorry. Hmm. So in the same way, if psi goes to psi only, uh, uh, so you can what is the probability uh, for this thing for the orthogonal uh, uh, orthogonality condition? And the probabilities should add to ultimately add to one. Now, if you remember, the states alpha one, theta one, alpha two, uh, psi one, alpha two. Psi one. If it's before measurement, it was one. After measurement, also because psi goes to phi or psi goes to psi prime or whatever after measurement. But if the linear combination should be equal to one, uh, so that is defined traditionally as Bohr rule or a sort of conservation statement also for a closed system. The measurement should. Uh, it will. Now the point is here. The point. Uh, the thing. Which may not uh, necessarily uh, turn out to uh, uh, is that, for example, uh, if with the probabilities, will, uh, so if you add the idea of scalar, uh, is uh, the probabilities. Uh, so will it? Uh, if we change uh, right alpha with uh, one scalar and beta with another scalar, uh, so. Or psi going to phi. So if you had a, initially they were uh, we had some combination of scalars, and after uh, uh, after psi going to phi. So if we change the scalars for two observables, so will it uh, lead to any uh, change or not? So that's the point. Uh, that's the point. So if we change alpha with beta, so for example psi. Plus psi prime. So if you say, uh, if you just uh, read the arguments of them, this and this will not uh, represent the same state. If you start in the state and there is another state psi prime, but if you add now the scalar to this, it will not be the same state. So the use of scalar sometimes you can also associate with phase with it. So use of scalar with this. Uh, uh, If you want to intuitively uh, try to see it, so it will change somehow. It will not be uh, the same. The wave function will not be the same. Not the wave function. Evolution of wave function from state A to state B. Uh, so if two wave functions. So we have a scalar attached to some uh, this thing. So it will, they will not contribute to the same thing. So we can write uh, psi and phi. Uh, we can write, but you can say psi of psi, uh, psi i, phi of phi i. So, so it will be one. Uh, and in this case uh, of this uh, probabilities, probabilities, if psi of psi, phi of phi is one. So it will be uh, if psi goes to uh, phi in this case. If we define it this way. Right? If we have defined probabilities here this way, right? if psi is psi and phi of phi, uh, if we define these states, psi goes to phi, if psi goes to phi, then this psi of psi, phi of phi is one. So you can say it. The probability psi going to phi will give us phi of psi uh, squared. Now the question is. Uh, Uh, the question is: 
द क्वेश्चन इज सो एसेट ऑफ वेक्टर्स फाइव आई दैट आर ऑर्थोगनल एंड नॉर्मलाइज दैट आर ऑर्थोगनल एंड नॉर्मलाइज सो दैट साइज दैट फाइव ऑफ फाइव आई फाइव आई इज गोल वन इज सेट टू बी शबर्स ऑर्थोन है ना ऑर्थो नॉर्मेलिटी विल हैव बोथ कंडीशन सो यू हैव ऑर्थोगनलिटी कंडीशन द इनर प्रोडक्ट इज जीरो एंड ऑर्थो नॉर्मेलिटी डेल्टा आई जे आई स्कूल जे इज वन सो ऑर्थो नॉर्मेलिटी कंडीशन फॉर अ कंप्लीट ऑर्थो नॉर्मल कंडीशन ऑर्थो नॉर्मल सेट ऑफ ऑर्थो नॉर्मल सेट ऑफ बीस इज वैक्टर्स फाइव आई so equation 31 is these two equations which uh, i have just uh, the, i just uh, forgot uh, these two equations uh, this equation has uh, this uh, is 31.1 and and this equation i write it again psi is equal so we defined previously phi j psi phi j phi j phi j so for orthonormality conditions uh, or one is the orthogonality condition for orthonormality conditions uh, the psi can be written as phi j psi phi j psi of phi j in denominator phi sorry for orthonormality condition j is equal to g it's equal to One. one so that's why we can write it like this and if you want to have an inner product this is a given state but we want to have psi psi star and uh, so psi or psi bar can be defined it this is this uh, it's again phi goes to phi star so it will also be defined as phi i psi star and phi i Psi uh, and phi g phi g it's again equal to one. So you can uh, define it uh, like this. You can define psi prime psi is as in terms of uh, this. So now uh, the question is: These phi and psi are the complex uh, numbers, complex conjugates, okay. so we, uh, conjugates are symmetric. So which have some uh, properties of uh, being uh, positive uh, semi definite now question is that so i'll write a statement uh, this statement makes so the statement is that physical states physical states of quantum mechanics of quantum mechanics Or in one-to-one -one correspondence, or in one-to-one, one-to-one correspondence with raising Hilbert space. So, so, so this is what I am trying to say. We are trying to identify. observables and measurements or states how we have constructed hilbert space so physical states of quantum mechanics which we say normally psi psi is a wave function okay and though that wave function we have tried to define it to find it or infinite dimension through the hilbert space or in correspondence with the rays rays you can say it like this Point a segment directions. So we have tried to make a loose mathematical correspondence between observables of quantum mechanics and and that how we construct Hilbert space from whether it's complete and it's finite or finite in some limited sense. It's in principle infinite. We can define finite. It's finite by some complete discondition. That the sequence converges. If an n f n and m uh, infinity, the sequence will converge. Uh, in that sense, we are going to find it. So, in the if you uh, might uh, have read uh, quantum quantum mechanics, there is a Dirac's wave of uh, 
uh, writing the same thing. We will write their uh, states psi in terms of cat. Or bra uh, like this. We can write uh, this as bra and this as cat. Uh, 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 that's it. And sometimes we write this inner product as like this pi of psi. Bracket. Uh, bracket. It's also this. Another way of bracket, Dirac's algebra. Bracket way of uh, writing the uh, inner product in that sense. We are how can construct these conditions of orthonormality, orthogonality, and everything. Now we are going to uh, just uh, switch to uh, similar time. Huh? Yeah. We'll continue. Okay, this one. So we are. Uh, so in the next uh, class, we are going to just uh, uh, take the continuum states. Uh, this was how some arrays in the some discrete sense. Uh, but in principle, the number line you see, you might have heard the famous statement. Number line is very dense. Between two points in number, there are infinite numbers. So if we construct that thing, how we can adjust our definition of Hilbert spaces and observables and other things here in that sense also. So, so it's all.